you have your Bibles, uh, let's turn to uh, Philippians, the book of Philippians. Um, children's Church, who's got Children's Church? I know they ain't a whole lot of time, but okay. The kids are probably like, hey. so um, any of the kids that wants to go with uh, Lori and Wendy to Children's Church, then you guys can go on over. It's going to be Lori and Brandon. Brandon, do you have a headache? Do you need a Tylenol? <laughs> okay. Well, those kids might give you a headache, so you might need them. Your daddy's got some if you need it. Don't you just love inside jokes? Because other people are like, huh, what? Why was that funny? I ain't going to tell you. All right. Philippians chapter 1, uh, verses 20 through 24. The scripture I want to read uh, and uh, says this, According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or my death. Paul saying that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. Lord, for your scripture today, as we see it and we read it, God, may you apply it to our lives. Thank you so much for the service thus far. Speak to me, your servant, Lord. Speak to your people, because that's the only way they're going to get anything, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit come and, and, uh, and just speak what you want spoken today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I just read one verse. I'll refer to several verses, but uh, being a father takes courage. It, it really does. And, and today's um, sermon is entitled Cultivating Courage. Uh, something you gotta, you got to work at it. it. You know, some people might be born with it. I don't know. I'm, I'm not here to debate that one way or the other. But uh, if you wasn't born with it, you can get it. That's for sure. Now, that line's in the bulletin if you'd like to follow along. There is no evidence that Paul was a father. However, his, his life is surely a testimony to serving God with courage. So today I want us to learn how to cultivate our courage to be the best father that we can be. But more importantly than that, to be the best Christian that we can be. Courage has a very special place in the Christian experience as we... Uh, prayed about a while ago, somebody mentioned that, and then as we, uh, I, I'm sure right now, uh, it's getting uh, close to the time, in fact, I saw the time they started at 10 too, uh, but the church uh, down in Charleston uh, takes courage, it takes courage to be a Christian, and courage is a huge part of the Christian experience, because we see people cower and, and back down all the time. It seems like there's a lack of courage at times. Paul says, My earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness. That's courage. For a man of God to say, You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step up. And I'm going to be bold in my faith. And I'm going to say what needs to be said regardless of the cost. Now, God tells us how to speak. He said, Preach the truth in love. But... Um, Paul's a great example. Verse 18, Paul says, Whatever, either way, regardless, it don't matter, Christ is preached. And in that, Paul says, I am going to rejoice and I will continue to do so. And I say, when the gospel is no longer preached, then we're done. We're done. But Paul said, regardless, let the gospel be preached. You see, preachers will fail. Folks in the pew or will fail. We're going to sin. We're going to fall short of the glory of God, the Bible says. But when we work together, even though one might fall, we can help that one up. The gospel will still be preached. The preacher might quit and leave, but the gospel can still be preached. The preacher might get fired and leave, but the gospel can still be preached. Regardless, the body of Christ working together because even though what happened in Charleston was just, it's, it's incomprehensible. But that's evil. That's evil. 
That's exactly what evil looks like. And we better recognize and better know that the devil is alive and well and he is the author of evil. Man, we've got, a, we've got an enemy, don't we? I, wanna, I just want to give you three things today concerning Paul's courage that I think will, will help us in our battle. First of all, I want us to see Paul's concern for God's glory. In verse 20, he said that Christ also would be magnified. That was his aim. His aim, his goal was for Christ to be magnified. Whether it be in his life or whether it be in his death, he wanted Christ magnified regardless of what you and I do. If we're cleaning the church, if we're preaching, teaching, if we're whatever, if we're going to the grocery store, whatever we do in this life, we can magnify Christ. In our job, we can be a good worker. No matter what we're doing, no matter where we're at, we can magnify Christ. Now, would anybody say I always magnify Christ in everything I do? Uh, me neither. Plenty of times I don't. But I'll tell you what, we need to help each other and we need to remind each other that it's all about Jesus and nothing about us. It's all about Him, right? It's all about Jesus. We better magnify Jesus in this church. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. That's all we got to do. That's all we got to do, my brothers and sisters, is lift up Jesus Christ. That's all we have to do. You say, well, I... I can't be, I can't do, I can't, I can't, I can't. You can lift up Jesus. Amen. All you got to do is lift up Jesus, the Bible says. Now, now, Paul, we're talking about his concern for God's glory to make sure that God gets the glory. And his aim was exactly that. What's our aim? What's our aim? There's a place in your outline that you can answer that question. What is my aim? Is my aim to make a lot of money and have a big house? Is my aim to have my name on this and my name on that? Then Christ will not be glorified. But when you can look at me and know that it's all God and nothing about me, then Christ is glorified. Christ is glorified. What is our aim? Not only in Paul's aim, but look at his activity. In verse 17, Paul said, I am set, I am appointed to defend the gospel. Now, there's going to be certain people who really like this. And there's going to be other people who say, oh, I can't do that. But I want you to look at this word. I am set, or I am appointed to defend. That word defend means a verbal defense. Paul told him, he said, be ready in season and out season. You better be ready at any moment of the day to defend the gospel. To defend a, a verbal defense. It means a reason statement. You better know what you believe and why you believe it. That's what I'm trying to say. You better know why Jesus ought to be magnified. Why should Jesus be magnified, Rick? Because He gave His life for you and I. Because Jesus gave His life. Because God gave His only begotten Son. He should be magnified. And He better be magnified in this church, in my life, and in your life. In everything we do. That's our aim. That's our goal. I know we fail. I sure do. I've done plenty. And I will probably still do plenty that God won't be magnified or glorified. But we got to help each other. We ought to be willing to go up to somebody and say, Hey, what you just now said, what you just now said about that person, that ain't magnifying Christ. What you just now did, that did that's not magnifying Christ. We ought to be able to do that, shouldn't we? His activity. That he, Paul knew what he was supposed to do. Verse 20 again, look at it. I am not ashamed and I will be bold. I mean, that's what Paul is talking about here. I mean, sometimes, you know, we, we just act so timid. And, uh, you know, we don't mind somebody at work knowing that we're a Christian or at least that we go to church. Well, you go to church. We don't mind somebody, oh yeah, I was raised that way. We live in an area where it's okay to go to church. Alright? It's... 
A lot of people go to church. But as the old guy said, going to church don't make you a Christian like standing in a garage makes you a car. I mean, we need to hear what Paul says today and say, I will not be ashamed and I will be bold. Paul said in Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Our activity should line up with what we believe. You say, well, I believe that Jesus came, that He's on one, one and only, only begotten Son. And, well, our life should say that. Our life should tell that. You say, I believe that Christ should be magnified. Our walk. See, it's easy to talk to talk, but it's different to walk to walk, isn't it? And just like that song, let my life song sing to you. Let my life make a difference in somebody else's life. In fact, later on we'll see that Paul says, even if it's my death, if by my death, or by what I might do, or what I might say, might make someone else more bold for the gospel. Maybe something you can do might make that person you work beside of or go to school with, maybe that will make them more bold for the Lord. So check your aim. Watch your activity. And then look at Paul's assurance in verse 19. He said, For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Verse 25 talks about him having confidence. I know. I know. I know I'm saved. I don't have to hope so. I know. Sister Dodd, I know I'm going to heaven. I'm going to fail here. People are going to get mad at me here, but I'm still going to heaven. That's wonderful, ain't it? I mean, we can all take that to lunch with us today. That will help us to know that, yeah, we're going to fall, we're going to fail. But God's good. He's faithful, ain't He? I think fathers need to have this kind of confidence. I uh, oh, I'd love, I wish we had the time to let my daughter get up here and tell you how, what a good father I was. <laughs> oh, it, it wouldn't take that long, I promise you that. I'd, I'd be afraid to do that. She might, she might tell you some of the other stuff. She, she, she might, <laughs> no, we won't do that. But I'll tell you something. I think we ought to have, as I look back, I wasn't a perfect daddy. And I didn't have a perfect daddy. But I saw confidence in my dad. And I hope my kids saw confidence, not in myself. But even though I fail, God still got me through. Daddies, we need that confidence. Then notice quickly Paul's contempt for his own comfort. Verse 14 says, And most of all brethren in the Lord, or most of the brethren in the Lord, excuse me, having become confident by my chains, by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear because of my chains. Don't be too negative on what God's putting you through. Because God might be putting you through something intense to help your neighbor to help your brother, to help your sister. Paul was, had a willingness to pay the price. He said, because of any, any suffering. Verse 20 says, whether it be life or by death, let Christ be magnified. Let Christ be magnified. Regardless, let Christ be magnified. Paul had a willingness to him. He, he says in verse 25, I desire to stay for your furtherance. Paul had a mind. He was a man. He said, I know I got things I want you to hear. I got things I want to say to you. I know I got things that can help you. But he didn't think that much of himself not to say, That's what I'm thinking. That's what I want. But if it's by my death, then so be it. Verse 26 that your rejoicing might increase. You see, Paul's, he wasn't concerned about his own comfort. Now, Paul wasn't perfect. I'm sure Paul failed. I know he did. In fact, Paul said, I'm the chief sinner. But I want to tell you something. What I'm seeing right here is his willingness, and he wasn't concerned about his own comfort. 
The place Paul was in was a difficult and dangerous place. The threat of death was every day for him. Every day. And you and I live in a place we're not afraid of death even though we watched what happened in Charleston and we watched it happen time and time and time again in Colorado and other places. We still sit here today. Did we do anything about our security? Did we have an armed guard standing outside? Now, don't raise your hand. I would say how many people are armed, but I ain't going to, don't, don't. We're not going to do that. It's on camera. <laughs> we don't need to know. I just hope they is so. <laughs> we hadn't changed anything. Why, well, we skipped the church this morning like we always did. Like we always have. And we fellowshiped and we had coffee and we talked and we had Sunday school. And we gathered here and we enjoy our heritage of our fathers and all that. We're safe and secure. We feel that, don't we? Otherwise, we'd have done something about it. We'd had Big John back there with his uh, being a security guard. I mean, nobody gonna mess with Big John, is he? He too big. Would make a difference. Then I want you to notice Paul's confidence because here's what makes all the difference in the world: his confidence in God's control. I could step down that step and die of a heart attack. I have no idea. I can walk outside and walk in front of a Mack truck. If I do got to get run over, I hope it is a Mack truck. We, we may never see each other again. But you know what? God's in control. And Paul had confidence in God's control. Verses 23 and verse 24 reads this, For I am in a strait between two, having a desire to depart... And to be with Christ. How many knows that? How many would say right now, I wish I could go on to heaven right now? I, I, man, I just, let's go. Don't get, if He takes me to the door, don't get in my way because I'm a coming. I'm ready to go. Man, can you imagine how good it's going to be? But Paul said, I, I've got this desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better, and it is. But he said, verse 24, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. I want to go. But if it's better for me to stay, whatever, whatever you want, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, Lord. Mm. Paul had a confidence in God's control. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we're helpless, that we can't do anything about it. Sometimes with no understanding of what to do or what to even think about it. But it's in those moments of helplessness that God provides hope. And so when we feel like the roof is caving in, when we feel like the walls are closing in, when we feel like the floor is kind of crumbling out beneath us, that's when we find courage in Christ. We find our courage in God to do, to make, to make that next step. To be bold. To claim Christ and say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that because that's not going to glorify God. No, I'm not going to say that. Or I'm going to go back and redo something because what I did in the first time didn't glorify God. I'm going to redo it so it glorifies God. Paul assessed his circumstances and, and even though he was in a tough spot, he said God's in control. Even though he didn't understand, God was in control. And God is in control today. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, Paul says this, I am persuaded, I am convinced, he says, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come in verse 39, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Man, we need to know that today. That, that changes everything. Everything. That changes everything. 
Paul said in 2 Timothy 1.12, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I believe. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So my question is this. Is there something you need to commit to Jesus until that day? Our concern should be for God's glory, not our own comfort. But we ought to live like we have confidence, knowing that God is in control. Father, we just come to you now, Lord, thanking you for allowing us to celebrate Father's Day with these folks. Lord, we, we do honor our heritage of our dads. We do have memories. And Lord, I know that some here today are a little sad because their daddy's gone on. But they have a memory and a heritage, and we celebrate that today. And you tell us to. And we're not ashamed of doing that. Lord, I pray today that if there's one here that does not know your Son as Lord and Savior, God, they feel the void in their life. Lord, help them see today. Show them the light, God. That that void can be filled, but only one way, through Jesus Christ. Father, use us. Use this church. We ask in Jesus' mighty, holy, and precious name. Amen.